Hi guys, we're going to talk about endosonic process today, but please bear with my voice because I'm having quite a cold and we have some typographical error here, right here you put a letter E because earthquake has an E. So we talk about the different kinds of uh, plate boundaries, earth stresses in the, its definition. So now let's move forward to earthquake and its faults okay we're going to talk about the type of faults its activeness and inactiveness so first what is a fault fault is a fracture or break in the crust where earthquakes are most likely to occur repeatedly again it can occur repeatedly forms when the rocks of the crust are compressed or stretched by plate movement so again we have different kinds of plate movement such as convergent divergent and transform so here's an overview of san andreas fault line at the same time our very own cebu fault line faults again it's the movements along a fault can be up down or sideways so we have two parts of fault it's foot wall and the hanging wall foot wall is a block of rocks below a fault and hanging wall is a block of rocks above a fault do not be mistaken foot wall and hanging wall are not whole it's actually a block of rocks below and above the fault line so here's a picture of a normal fault and two not two but three types of fault first we have to tackle about the deep slip fault where the crack is slanted or at an angle two types of this slip fault is normal deep slip fault and reverse deep slip fault so based on this picture typically reverse fault can actually called or can be called trust fault in normal fault you can see that the hanging wall moves down. This is the hanging wall. This one is the hanging wall. Or rather, this one is the hanging wall. And in trust fault, the hanging wall actually goes up. Okay? So, that's the difference is a short animation and a preview of Sierra Nevada. Owens Valley and Mountains Horse, which can actually uh, be a big example or a vivid example of normal fault. Again, normal fault can be called or also known as tensional fault. Okay, do not be mistaken, we also have different kinds of stresses that involve tension, but normal deep sleep fault or tensional fault is different from that one. As we talk about the reverse dip slip, in reverse fault, the foot wall moves down relative to the hanging wall and also known as compressional fault. Reverse faults form when rocks are actually compressed. So technically, it, when you say reverse, it's not that the hanging wall is going up, but actually the rocks are being compressed one another causing the hanging wall to actually move up playing but right now we have the overview of the following reverse fault structure and this is a example of a reverse fault structure where you can see the different kinds of movements from here and from this one going up and this one going down so, the last two types of faults is strike slip fault and the oblique slip fault. The strike slip fault shearing will cause the blocks of rock to slide horizontally past each other. Or, if you're going to compare it to the transform, it actually have the same movement and for the shearing of the earth's crust. So, next we have the oblique slip fault or the 3-in-1 fault. It's the combination of strike slip and deep slip motion. So, here's a table of comparison wherein you can see that normal fault and reverse fault, which is a deep slip fault, 
actually have the type of stress where intention and compression are happening. As well as a strike slip where sharing and again oblique tension, compression, and chin. So, here's an overview definition of the different fault movements which as or which I have been discussed earlier in last meeting regarding the earth stresses. It's actually the same picture of the things that, or how things happened so that you may be able to understand all of that. Stress types, tensional stress, compressional stress, and shear stress. Again, do not be mistaken by the stress types, fault types, and the different plate boundaries movement. They may have the same definition, but they are uh, categorically different. So, we have to talk about the active and inactive faults in the Philippines. And active faults are known to have recently generated earthquakes within the last 10 years and may still continue to generate earthquakes. So, it doesn't mean that the fault line doesn't involve any movement for the last 5 years. It's already inactive. You can say that it is inactive if it's an if it does not have any signs of generation of earthquake in the last 10 years. So, we have the major fault lines in the Philippines. And as you can see, I don't know if I can move this one, but it's not moving. So, this violet form is a trench where the trench is actually the deepest part of the ocean. So, we have two trenches, the Manila Trench, Trench in the is Luzon throw. So major faults in the Philippine settings. We have Philippine fault zone, the most extensive fault system, cut through the entire Philippine archipelago, meaning from Luzon to Mindanao. We all have connected or uh, in lateral strike fault zone. It's about 1,000 to 200 kilometers long side and is composed of many faults in their branches that traverse the Philippines through Luzon, cutting across Bicol in the Visayas all the way to the northern portion of Mindanao. So right now, I'm uh, showing you the video, uh, the picture, where in the fault line, as you see, the straight fault line is the active fault line. And... The, this one is the trenches of the Philippines. Have I mentioned that all throughout the plate tectonic movement, we actually have the Bahamas rise. So this is the place where Bahamas, if I'm not mistaken, is in. And it's actually larger and bigger than Luzon and rich in oil. Okay. So one of the major faults of the Philippines is the Valley Fault system or the west valley fault it consists of two northeast trending right lateral strike slip faults that begin in san mateo rizal continue through the parts of eastern metro manila and extend southwards through the cities of paradnaque montilupa santa rosa and possibly the tagaytay ridge so as you can see here it is the west marquina valley fault wherein it is i think what the, uh, the people who are actually studying earthquakes says that the big one or the big earthquake could possibly happen because West Marquina Valley Fault is one of the active fault lines. However, it is not having any movement as of now, but because of its inactivity, they say that it may have a rupture or an explosion. That's why everyone is preparing for the big one. I hope you are learning a lot in your earth and disaster risk management so that when the big one uh, happens, you all will be skilled enough to actually protect and survive that one. Okay, so as you see here, this is the Pasig River and this is the Marquina River and this line is the West Valley Fault Line. Next is the Lubang Fault, where found offshore between Batangas and Mindoro Island. I believe it is in 2014 where a 5 magnitude earthquake happened at the epicenter of Mindoro Island. 
and its intensity actually felt until Metro Manila. But becomes an oblique. It says here that it's a lateral strike slip like this, lateral, and fault along the Verde Island Passage, but becomes oblique as it turns closer towards the Manila Trench. So maybe it could be the one possible things that kapag lumapit siya sa Manila Trench, a possible tsunami can actually happen. But let's pray it will not happen. So, this is the picture of the Valley Fault System and Lubang Fault System is right here. Kalapan, Mindoro, Mamburao, and Rocks. So, major fault system in the Philippines also include the Central Mindoro Fault, marked by a break and slope between mountains of Western Mindoro. And this is easily seen in topographic maps. It is mostly a right lateral strike slip fault, but in some portions also show a normal dip slip movement. Responsible for the 1994 magnitude 7.1 earthquake in northeastern Mindoro, it ruptured the northern segment fault known as Aglubang River Fault. So today we're going to talk about the different seismic waves. Or seismic waves is basically the movement in the interior of the earth. Seismic, seismic waves have two parts. It's the body waves. Again, it has two parts. Let's write it here. I'm sorry, I'm ugly in writing. We have the body. And the surface. Ay, sorry, medyo lumayo yung letter A, pero magkadugtong lang sila, friends. Okay, again, seismic, oh, in other uh, term, it's seismic or seismic waves. It has two parts or two terms or two types. It has body and surface. So, again, we have the seismic waves. As you can see here, we have the P wave or the primary wave and S wave or the secondary wave which is part of the or which are part of the body waves and surface waves is this one. Okay, P wave moves along in straight direction and S wave is side to side direction and surface wave is a combination or a circular or a rotational in both directions. So, here's a video, or not a video, but a picture of a seismograph wherein they have located the earthquakes in Lamont, Rio de Janeiro, and the Berkeley. Locating earthquakes depth is something like this, and I'm gonna be showing you an elastic rebound on how the earthquakes actually uh, affects when it comes to the movement if you have an infrastructure uh, uh, in the middle of the road. It's something like this. It's that fast. Earthquakes move. Elastic rebound. And voila! The tree is already gone. So, we actually have some animation here on how do we measure earthquake. I hope you guys will watch this video or this animation for quite a while. So I'm back. I hope you learned a lot about epicenter and focus and the difference of magnitude and intensity. So let's talk about focus. Focus is the location within the earth where fault rupture actually occurs. And epicenter is the location on the earth's surface above the focus. So epicenter is above the focus and where we usually measure the magnitude or intensity of the earthquake. The difference of intensity and magnitude. Intensity is how strong earthquake feels to, be, to the observer, meaning ikaw. Ang nararamdaman mo ay intensity ng earthquake, okay? And the magnitude is related to the energy release or determined from seismic records. Rough correlation between the two or shallow, four shallow earthquakes. So, intensity depends on the distance to quake type of building, observer, 
varies from place to place and Mercalli scale 2, 1 to 12. So, sinasabi nila minsan that it's intensity 7 kung minsan nararamdaman natin that the whole house is actually shaking. And, yun. If you are in a lower ground, you can, um, minsan hindi mo mararamdaman yung movement ng earthquake. But if you are in a taller or in a high place such as buildings, mararamdaman mo yung shakings. That's why some of our buildings actually have springs already for the preparation or for precautions about the earthquake's intensity. Next is magnitude. Richer scale related to the energy release by the earthquake itself. Exponential. No upper and lower bounds. Large earthquakes is about 8.7 magnitude. So, this is how seismographic works as a demonstration on how they measure earthquakes. And seismographic measures ground motion at one instant, but really great earthquake last minutes releases energy over hundreds of kilometers. Kaya minsan, kahit nasa Mindoro yung epicenter, nararamdaman po natin siya sa Manila. Need to sum energy of entire record and modifies richer scale, but does not replace it. Adds about 1 magnitude to 8 plus quakes. So here's a tabulated uh, view of the magnitude and energy that has been uh, releasing. Magnitude, energy, explosive power, and example. So, as you can see here, it's just magnitude 3, but 1 ton of explosive when it comes to explosive power. And magnitude 3 is actually the reason why the World Trade Center collapsed. So, from this one, we had, or we have the following. So here's the summary of what we have talked today. Earthquakes generate waves that travel through Earth, and those waves are body waves and uh, surface waves, which is part of the seismic waves. Earthquakes occur when rocks slip along faults. Again, slip, breaking, and tilting of rocks. Number three, faults are classified by the kinds of movement that occur along them. Earthquakes don't kill people, buildings kill people. Magnitude and intensity are different from one another. Magnitude is the energy release and intensity is uh, the feeling of the or tama, the feeling of the absorber. Seismic waves are used to map the Earth's interior. That's why it is actually the movement of the Earth or the ground. Number seven, predicting earthquake is not yet possible. Kaya po, pag nag announce ang mga tao kung anong pwedeng mangyari ay possibility lang ang sinasabi because there's no 100% guarantee that it will happen soon. I hope you guys learned a lot for today and please do your advanced reading about the following. Again, we have our chapter assessment test next week, August 1. Goodbye and enjoy learning!